Hello, this is a video on how you change the hard disk inside an HP 250G2 laptop or notebook PC. Uh, the one that I am using has the product code of F0Y94EA and then hash or a, a pound sign ABU. Um, and let's get started. So basically you need to turn the machine over and remove the cover which covers the uh, RAM I believe it's just the RAM and possibly the wireless card and then undo all of the screws all of the way around the machine so there's uh, many of them in my case some of the screws are missing so the one that I pointed out initially I can't unscrew because it isn't there um, there are all these ones are the same length so you don't have to worry about remembering which one goes where although I find it's good practice still to lay them out in the same order that they came out in uh, also a good idea to take out the battery just makes it easier taking the cover off later In my case, I took out the CD drive at this point. So that's just underneath the cover that you removed is a different screw. And you undo that, and then the CD drive will slide out. Again, to save you losing it or forgetting which one goes where, I screwed that back into the, uh, the screw hole that it came out of. There are several screws within the plastic underneath that cover that you removed initially. So again those two screws in my case that I just pointed out are missing the screws so they've you know the original owner has lost them they've fallen out or whatever uh, so I can't unscrew those but in your case you would need to unscrew those ones. So that's hopefully all of the screws removed and it's a good idea to check at this stage because if you miss a screw you might damage the plastic casing. So make sure you unplug the keyboard, the touchpad I believe or possibly the power button and then the touchpad says so three little ribbon cables that you need to undo and you do that by uh, hinging the black tab upwards. Um, be very careful with them and don't force it because those are a nightmare if you do break them. So taking the cover off of this machine is much more of a nightmare than I expected. I had to be a lot more forceful uh, kind of unclipping it than, than you'd expect. I also wasn't using a tool that I prefer. I had to use a screwdriver so uh, <laughs> you probably are better off using a spudger or a, basically a thin bit of uh, metal rather than a screwdriver just so you don't leave marks on the plastic of the case um, but it's essentially unclipping the little plastic clips which hold the palm rest or the top onto the rest of the case or the, the bottom part of the case uh, also being very mindful of circuit boards or other things that might be further into the machine so don't kind of wrench the entire screwdriver into it. So 
So there you go, I've got one side undone. The other side kind of popped up fairly easily at the back. And then I just had to unclip it towards the front of the case. And then there seemed to be a quite a bad sticking point near where the touchpad buttons were. And uh, sorry, the screen is in the way. There we go. So that's me just looking down the case to try and work out why it's getting stuck near where the touchpad buttons are. So once you've got most of the clips undone, and as I say, in my case, around these touchpad buttons, it became a bit of a nightmare. But it was just a case of then hinging the thing upwards and pulling it towards the LCD screen and the whole top comes off. And uh, <laughs> just a reminder, make sure before you put too much force on that, that the three ribbon connectors are unplugged and uh, free. You don't want to rip those cables or break the connectors. So there we have it, you've now got access to the hard disk. There is a ribbon cable running over it. Initially I wanted to just undo one end of it and then fold it over, but it kept folding back, so it just got in the way. Uh, again, that's a little flip-up connector, so it hinges upwards, and then you can just lift the cable out. I was trying to fold it backwards, but that's not going to be an option, so I just took the entire cable out. Then there are three screws holding the hard disk in, one closest to the edge of the case, closest to the camera, and then two in the middle of the case or towards where the motherboard is. Then you need to lift it slightly and remove the SATA connector, or the, the connector, at the end of the drive. And there you have it. You've extracted the hard disk. There are four screws on the metal bracket that it's mounted on. So undo those. Those ones are a different size, so make sure you keep those separate, because if you mix those up with the ones for the case, you will end up not being able to put something back together as well as it should be. And then remember the orientation of where the drive is and where the connector is, and which way up the drive goes and retrieve your new hard disk or your SSD. In my case, an SSD is being upgraded. it into the bracket. I'll put the SATA connector onto the new hard disk or SSD, drop the caddy back into where it goes, screw the three screws back into it to hold it in place. Mm. 
And then, very important, don't forget about that little ribbon cable that you removed, otherwise the USB ports at the edge of the machine won't work. So that just drops back in, it should be fairly obvious when it's in place, and then you click the little, uh, or fold the, the connector tensioner back down. And then you can get the top cover and put it back into place. And then in my case I turned it over and made sure that the cables were all accessible because if you click it down and you've trapped a cable then it is more of a pain to undo the whole thing again. So before you click the top cover back down just make sure that the cables aren't trapped. Turn it back over and basically clip all of the sides back down of the cover or the palm rest and keyboard. Then you can turn it back over and reconnect those three ribbon cables. In my case, I didn't connect that keyboard, that large one that I just connected. I didn't connect it properly the first time. And the escape key and the enter key on the keyboard and some other keys didn't work. Um, so I had to take the cover off the bottom and undo and reseat that connector. So just be careful when you're doing those connectors that they are securely in place and not slightly off um, or not quite aligned straight, etc. So just, just be wary of that. If your keyboard does some strange things after this, it's probably because you've uh, not reconnected it correctly. So that's the ribbon cables done. It should now just be screwing back in all of the screws and you'll see like in the beginning when I didn't unscrew some of the screws because they were missing obviously because some of the screws are still missing um, I, there'll be some that I won't put screws in I do move some of the screws around so that they're further towards the edge of the machine holding the machine together which are the, the more important places um, but I hope in your case that you have all of the screws so just make sure that all of the screws are, are screwed back in securely and tightly. And it's time to put the CD drive back in. So I just retrieved the screw from it, which I had uh, temporarily kept in it. Slide it back into its place and then put the holding screw back in. And it should be return the battery and return the cover for the RAM and wireless. And there we are, hopefully job done. That's how you replace the hard disk or upgrade the hard disk on an HP 250 G2 laptop or notebook PC.